What's up guys, in today's video we are talking about polygraphs, we're talking about interviews, we're talking about fakers, we're talking about a whole bunch of stuff. Welcome to the second episode of Ask a Firefighter where I answer your guys' questions about the fire service and any really any questions that you have. Let's get right into it. So the first question is from Jesse Meany and this one says, just took the chief's panel interview is it normal for this group to seem less personal than the panel interview? Yes. Uh, I just, sorry, I just want to make sure I reread that correctly. Yes. So when you take these interviews, don't be surprised if the, whether it be the panel interview or the chief interview, that their affect is just really flat. You're not going to get a lot of feedback from them. They're usually not going to be too interactive with you. They'll ask you questions and get a response. And sometimes the best you'll get is they'll look down and take a couple notes on whatever they're writing on. And then they move on to the next question. You'll hear me talk in some of my other stuff about the interviews, about the aggressive interviewer that will always follow up with you. And if you, you know, whatever your answer is to a question, they'll always kind of challenge it. Um, I'll put some of my stuff about interviews uh, up here. And you, you guys are familiar with the channel. So, um, there's a ton of stuff about interviews on here, but don't be surprised if the chief or whoever else is there or the panel interview just has a very flat affect and you don't get a lot. It doesn't mean they don't like you. It doesn't mean they're not gonna hire you, um, but that's usually the way it is. But again, every interview is different, every department's different, but just know that that's something that's, that's pretty prevalent. Good question though. Next question is from Huff Nasty. And this one says, thank you for your videos. They are very helpful. I have a question. If you are offered positions with two separate fire departments, how would you suggest making the decision of who to go with? Really, really, really good question, Huff Nasty. Um, first off, I like the name Huff Nasty. Second, uh, so this is a personal decision for you. Only you can answer this question, um, but there's several criteria. The way it usually works with people is it seems like they'll test and they'll interview at a bunch of places and they'll get denied, 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 denied. Then all of a sudden, three or four departments will want to hire them all at once. So this is actually far more common than a lot of people realize. Ultimately, it's up to you how you decide. But if you're asking me my opinion on the some of the factors that I would take into consideration for a department that I would work at is, number one, I would take into uh, salary. How much are they going to pay you? Now, there's people out there that will say, well, it doesn't matter. You shouldn't do it for the salary. You should do it for the job. That's nonsense, this is a job, you need to make money, this is life. Um, that's important. Uh, another thing that I would take into consideration is the reputation of the department. Um, a lot of departments have reputations for being not very enjoyable places to work, kind of that frat house mentality. Uh, other ones have reputations for having a lot of good guys and a lot of good girls and um, just real laid back, good solid people, good work ethic. I would see and try and find out as much as you can about um, the culture of the department. Another criteria that I would take into consideration is what's their call volume and what types of calls do they go on? Obviously, if you're going to a larger city, you're gonna see a lot more fire, a lot more action. Uh, if you're going to kind of a suburban type department, it's probably gonna be a little bit slower paced. You're probably gonna do a lot more EMS. Um, again, so those are just some of the things I would take into consideration. Um, you also have to think about it not from 22 or 25 or 20 something year old you, depending on how old you are, whoever's watching this. You also have to think about this in your 30s, 40s, 50s, and so on. Um, if you're planning on doing this for a career, uh, being a firefighter can be pretty tough on your body. And so where are you going to want to be working in 20 years from now, not just today? That's a controversial thing. It's not really controversial, but everybody has their own opinions on it. Some people say that's a bad way to look at it. Some people say it's a good way to look at it. Um, it's totally up to you, but those are just some of the criteria I would take into mind. The last thing I'll say about this is a lot of people have this idea that, um, for example, this happened to me. I got offered a job and I accepted it. And three weeks later, the current department I work at offered me a job as well. And I left after three weeks to come to where I am now. Um, a lot of people have the idea that you should never do that because you should be honored because you got the job at that first department. That also is nonsense. This is your life and this is your job and this is your career. You need to do what's best for you, not because somebody else so that you should be thankful that they hired you. So you take whatever criteria you want. Those are just some good ones, some high level ones that I think about um, and do make the choice that's best for you and your family. But very good question. Uh, next question is from Flavored Mint, 
It says, if you could reply to this question, it would be great. So here you go, Flavored Mint. I'm replying to this question. If you were a military firefighter and decided to become a civilian firefighter after you got out, what kind of advantages and benefits would you have over, say, a civilian firefighter that also had four years of experience? Uh, that's a tough question. So I guess the biggest advantage would be that a lot of cities and departments will give um, bonus points, I guess you would call it, on the civil service exam. So before when you apply, you have to test. Um, a lot of places will give, I don't know if I would say preferential hiring, maybe, um, but they'll give you bonus points. They'll give you an advantage because you have military experience. Um, so that will help you with the testing aspect. The other thing that I would say is people coming out of the military, also, they have an idea of fire departments, police departments, um, they're paramilitary environments. They're not the same as the military, um, but they have a lot of similar structure um, that a lot of branches in the military have. So if you already have experience and know what that's like in working in an environment like that, a very type A, more intense environment, you're going to have an easier time fitting in. Uh, that doesn't mean everybody in the military has that same mentality. It doesn't mean every department's like that. Um, but generally, from the social aspect, you might be a little bit more well-equipped than somebody that never really played sports at a higher level or, or was never in the military that's never really been in an environment like that. That doesn't mean that if you haven't been in an environment like that, you wouldn't do well because I know lots of people that haven't and they do great. Um, but just know that those will probably be your two biggest advantages. As far as actual firefighting, I've never been in the military. Um, I've never been a military firefighter, so I don't know how you do things differently. It might even vary depending on what branch you're in, I'm assuming, because airport firefighting is very different than structural firefighting. Uh, so I guess it depends on what branch of the military, but you probably have some knowledge, skills, and experience that normal civilian structural firefighters don't have. And you might be able to bring some of that to the table. So I think those would be some of your big advantages. So I hope you found that helpful. Uh, next question is from Firefighter1932. It says, I need some advice. I got a friend that want to join a volunteer fire department where we live, but he talk about coming to a meet all the time, but he make excuses why I can't join. Why you can't? I'm assuming you mean why he can't join. Um, but he really passionate about the fire service. How can I get him to come to a meet on a Tuesday night? Thanks. Uh, you won't. So if your friend claims he's passionate about the fire service but won't do something as minimal and as easy as showing up to a meeting on a Tuesday evening, he is not passionate about the fire service. Um, this is the most common thing ever. When I was playing soccer, uh, everybody would want to talk about how they wanted to be in the pros and they wanted to do this and they wanted to do, and people do this with all sorts of things. People want better relationships. People want to lose weight. People want to get in shape. People want to get stronger. People want to do all these things. And then when you ask them, well, what work have you done? What have you physically done? What actions have you taken to move yourself towards that goal? Well, nothing. Okay. Judge people by their actions, never by their words. Um, and I'm sure whoever your friend is, is a nice guy. Um, but if you can't even say, come to a meeting with me on Tuesday, if he won't show up for that, um, he's definitely not going to show up when it gets hard in the fire academy. He's definitely not going to show up when he has to study for a civil service exam. He's definitely not going to show up for getting in shape for the CPAT and all sorts of other things. So my advice to you, cut him loose. Move on. Um, he's probably not going to show up. But good question. Uh, next, Tanner asks, is it appropriate to wear a uniform to an interview? I've been a firefighter for over two years and currently don't own a suit. I do have my class A uniform for my current department. Is it rude or unprofessional to wear it when meeting with other department officials or to an interview? Uh, I would strongly recommend you do not wear your current class A's to another department's interview. Um, I, that would be very much frowned upon. Uh, if you don't have a suit, I don't care what you have to do. I go to Macy's, J.C. Penney, wherever you can get a suit for a hundred bucks. Go get a suit and wear a suit. When you're leaving, the, when you wear Class A's, you wear those as a representation of where you work. Um, so if you're trying to get a job somewhere else and you're going to interview somewhere else, you don't want to associate yourself with them. You are there to represent you not this other department. Now, if you're, if you're out and about representing your current department and you meet with other you know, fire department officials and you're in, your, you're in an official capacity in your current class A's, fine. 
But if you're leaving to go to an interview, do not under any circumstances wear your current class A's to a new department. And by the way, this, this goes the same for um, a lot of volunteer firefighters that show up to interview at full-time departments. Do not wear all your volunteer gear. Um, they're interested in you. They don't care about your current department or what sort of, you know, where you worked last year or whatever. Uh, represent yourself not your current or former department. Uh, and then last question says, hey, my question, I was required to take a polygraph test for a department. While filling out my background packet, the examiner got an attitude saying I was taking too long. And then when I admitted to stealing things like pens and gloves, he then got another attitude. I passed all sections except one particular section. I was completely honest throughout the whole test and it cost me a job. What do I do from here? Can I get another examiner and test? I know exactly how you feel. I have been in that boat several times. I've taken several polygraphs and CVSAs. If you're not sure what the CVSA is, it stands for Computer Voice Stress Analysis. It's a version of a polygraph. Um, and let me be the first to tell you that polygraphs are nonsense. Uh, everybody knows that they can't detect a lie. Uh, the only reason departments use these is to, if they have multiple candidates and they know who they're already interested in and let's say you're a candidate who is a good candidate and would be a good fit and they need a reason to get rid of you they will use the polygraph to get rid of you now a few things about polygraphs one of the things about the polygraphs is sometimes they are a test uh, meaning whoever the polygraph examiner will kind of act differently around you um, for example you said that uh they were getting an attitude while you were filling out your, your, your background packet. Maybe they were doing that just to kind of test you and push you a little bit, see how you would respond, see how you would react. Um, but the fact that you told the truth and then they failed you and claimed that you lied, that's happened to me multiple times. It's nonsense. It's BS. And my best advice for you is just move on. Um, and I know that sucks and I know that's difficult and I know that's probably not what you want to hear. Um, but you do not want to work for a department that does not want you there. It will be miserable. Um, and can you get another examiner in a test? Maybe there might be some sort of legal action you can take, but quite honestly, it's not worth it. Just move on. Uh, like I said, I know that's tough, but uh, that's the best advice I can give you. So as always, I hope you guys find these useful and these helpful. I'm thinking about messing around with some YouTube lives and see how those go. See if you guys would be interested in that. If you are, let me know in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up and a like. Consider subscribing to the channel and I will see you guys in the next video.